how to deal with unconscious people. Because the thing is, they always try to make you part of their world. They have their mindsets, their belief, how the world is. So like the world is just a material thing. There are no other dimensions. Spiritual things doesn't exist. So they believe this. And so they created their whole civilization and everything. And you are also, as long as you live in the body, you are part of this. And they make you part of this because this is their belief. And so you have to deal with them. But sometimes they become angry for no reasons. Or they blame on you trying to make you guilty for no reasons. Or they treating you in such bad ways that you even feel sad. And therefore, it's so important that we talk about how to deal with them in the concrete situation. The first thing is relax. I learned it 20 years ago, actually, when I had the very first time a car. In the car, it was pretty easy. It was an isolated situation. The other person was there in the other car and they tried to invite me to a street race. Not official street race, you know, just on the red light. When you are waiting, then some people try to start a small competition. And so in a very early age, I already could figure out how the people involve or try to involve you in their life, in their belief system, in their world, in their mental world, as well as in their material world. But it was easy for me. Maybe I have just tried it once or twice, but after then I stopped it. I could see it doesn't make sense. It can bring problems even with the police. So we don't do that. And this was just an isolated situation in a car and when nobody's attacking you with words or with other things. But when you are in a situation where people blame you or people attack you on other ways with words, even in anger or something like this, then we have to deal with it. Because on our way to the enlightenment, when we are on the way during the spiritual awakening, we are very sensitive. And so whenever people harm us, we feel even more pain, psychological pain. And of course, we have to avoid. It is not good to avoid too much. Because after then, when you have avoided for so many days and then you go back to the society, that would be even harder because you made a new habit of being alone and then society will appear even harder to you. So it's good to entang a little bit from time to time, maybe two, three hours each day, something like that. About the lifestyle, there is also material and videos on this channel. And as I already said, how to deal with them, the first thing is, not to entangle too much. Go out for, if you can, and you don't have to work, just meet people for two, three hours each day. Not more often. Even also it is good that sometimes there is a day of meeting no one, another day there is just one hour and like this. But if you have to entangle in the work to pay your rent or something like this, then already the work is enough entanglement and you have to reduce it in your free time. When you are in work, the rest of your free time is actually for you alone because you are already enough entangled in the world, in the work. And what happens then when there is a concrete situation where someone attacks you? It can happen in work, it can happen in any other place, in any other situation. Someone comes to you, blames you for something, you are actually not guilt. But automatically inside of you, there are some reactions. And that's the next thing. Number two is don't feel guilty. Don't let pull you so much down. And even don't feel anxious. Also, it can cause anxieties when someone is even shouting on you. That can cause anxieties and that can make the situation even worse. And it can even block your words if you fall too much in it. And also don't become shy. If it's not so bad, you don't feel guilty, you don't feel anxious, something like that. No bad emotions, but sometimes already you are shy just because maybe for reasons of kindness or something like this. But you don't have to be shy here because you have now to react. That means to act because considered to the other person which doesn't want to develop 
which is not about that higher thing. He or she is not interested in spiritual awakening, so they will not change and not behave in better ways. And we can't expect it from them. And because they don't do it, they don't develop. Therefore, they react. They have not the emotions under control. And that's why they suddenly shout on you for no reasons. Or sometimes for a reason, because when they see a reason and even you don't see the reason, or even you have really done something and there is a reason, it, it doesn't play a role. It is good that you learn, and that's important, to not react. Don't react back. Just relax. And that's the third point. First of all, relax. Don't let force you to a quick answer. Maybe you will answer in wrong ways that you have even more disadvantages as you already have because you already are suffering. This person shouted at you. You are triggered. So many emotions are caused inside of you. You don't even have time to meditate to resolve the emotions. So you are in a very critical situation where you are absolutely out of balance and actually you need a retreat in that situation. If you can, you can try to get a retreat if it's possible. You are not in work or even when you are in work, you can go on the toilet or something. You need a retreat to calm because calming, relaxing is also the very best thing that you give the right answers, that you don't react like them, that you have time to consider what you are doing, what you are saying. So you act because you consciously make your choice of your behavior and of your words and you don't fall in the trap like the person is that you automatically say things that you don't want to say but sometimes you have to so not always there is the opportunity to run away on toilet and see even in some situations it doesn't look good when you run away on the toilet so what will people think and it doesn't fit in the situation sometimes so then you have to say something, but still you go inside of you and call. You try, for, you give yourself some seconds even. You are still there. The person is still there looking at angry to you, very angry maybe. But you take your brief and you try to go. Not only it's not like people with breathing meditations always explain, it's deeper. You go in your consciousness. You try to go more in your inner side this will bring you more protection in that situation even they can harm your body but they will not in most cases <laughs> but just consider there is your undiable eternal soul inside of you and you have to care for this so first go inside it will also care for you. It's not you don't have to. Actually, it's more that this eternal soul cares for you. But you have to calm, go inside first. You will get even if you have luck and you are very connected, you can even get answers from inside. So you don't have to even consider an answer. That is just in worst case. But it can also happen that the higher self already helps you, that it appears as an automatic reaction or an automatic answer, but you know it comes from this higher thing when it feels comfortable, when it feels good. Still, you can break it. Né? When it brings you an answer, you don't, you are so developed that you can even call him, you have an answer, but still you can make a consideration. Will I say this answer or should I stop to say it? And should I consider again if there is a better answer? So even in seconds, you are thinking much faster than this angry person which believes he's fast and anger and he forces you to now give an answer quicker quicker and you are in this critical situation but you calm and this is so important never forget to relax the fourth point is explain your condition or even your feelings but on the other hand be also careful here for example, when you are sensitive and someone attacks you, even with shouting on you, then it is not good that you react in ways like, oh, let me, I'm so sensitive. That will be the biggest failure because people who are even shouting on others, who are treating others very bad, very aggressive, those ones will attack you even more because you are showing weakness. 
Weakness is good and a great development because most people avoid weakness. They all want to be strong and it is good and it is well known and people declare it as good when you are appearing strong, mentally strong, not only mentally, also in your behavior, you appear strong because the outside world is hard and strong and cold and we have to be hard and cool and strong. So and weakness People try to avoid. They don't love the opposite. They always live one-sided. But you know both sides. You are trying to adjust to the hard world. And also, you know about your weakness and you accept your weakness. And you develop because you are not one-sided. You always accept there are always two sides of the coin. Every coin has two sides. This person will not understand because they are not ready to develop, as you know, most of them. You have to make, um, you have to defer here because not everyone is the same. But when they appear so aggressive that they are even shouting on you, then they are not worth it that you explain too much about your situation. First of all, they are not worth it because they will even attack you more. And the next thing is, they won't even understand it. They don't want, they will not have an open ear. They will not be ready to accept further explanations from you. And I don't want to blame these people because I say they are not worth it. I will come to that when it comes to the forgiveness. I will come at the end. But for here, until now, when someone attacks you very aggressive, you don't have to show your weakness. You try to say just, you explain your situation. But you don't fall in complaining and you don't explain too much. This is also sensitive people, even if you had a hard childhood or something like this, or even still if you had a normal childhood, but you are on this path, on this self-development to reach the spirit or in the time of the spiritual awakening, you are so sensitive that you even tend to explain too much just because you want to be kind and you want to show compassion with this person, so you explain and explain, but the person doesn't want to hear, the person is aggressive, and it was a concrete answer now, and it forces you and brings you even in a very critical situation that you only have a few seconds to answer. You should not explain or complain too much. You should not explain too much and try to avoid complaining. And in the worst case, it can happen when you're so sensitive that you suddenly have the reaction inside of you that you may start to cry but it is not good when this aggressive most aggressive person is there in the crying situation when there is no other opportunity then you take the toilet okay because it is better just take your time there the crying will automatically care okay, maybe unconsciously your body is trying to bring you somewhere else to have a time out in that situation it can happen but it, that it is even your soul is caring for you it can happen but uh, it is also an automatic reaction for someone who even when you are developed and when you are in that situation it is suddenly so so many emotions are there you are triggered so much and there is an automatic reaction of crying don't feel shameful even if it happens for in front of that person and you have no opportunity for toilet or it comes so spontaneously that you can't even suppress crying and suppress the teardrops in that situation until you reach the toilet so even that but even don't feel shameful for that because even when the person see it or when you see it on the way to the toilet when it already starts or so it is good for some people this will calm this other person also but if you do it extra in front of that person that is not good then they will again see your weakness and then they will be even harder especially such kind of person you have to defer different kind of unconscious people also there will be another video the fifth point is you have to be strict sometimes now it depends again on the kind of attack or the kind of person when the person is really aggressive you also have to be strict. If the person is not that aggressive, even then when you feel that someone is forcing you with words, you have to be strict. And I raised this point extra. It sounds so easy and not value to make an extra point. But if you are 
on this self-development in the spiritual awakening and you are so sensitive and you have developed kindness and compassion so much and now you have to be strict this doesn't fit to your new values of being kind and having compassion for the attacker and you know this it's just a religious thing or something from philosophy also but the point is the people attack you and even if you feel compassion, the people will not understand it when they are unconscious people. Even out of your compassion, sometimes there is no solution. Sometimes there is a solution. Sometimes you can even go away just and avoid this person. It depends when you are entangled, like in a work, it is not often the possibility there to avoid. But if you are not so entangled in everyday life, it's just a shop owner so you can just go away and ignore this person and never buy there again so it depends really on the situation on the person but the more you are among people you will get more experience not from the normal experience which you had earlier but now including your compassion you try always to get the middle way of course you can have the compassion i will come to the points at the end of the forgiveness and for compassion and so but you have to protect yourself first and protection is very important because you will lose your compassion and all your developed stuff when you also fall in anger because you are just human. You are not absolutely enlightened. You are not at the final goal. And so we all can fall back in everyday life. And that is so dangerous. And especially when someone is attacking in very negative ways there are so many emotions and that's why you first have to be protected from that that you can really act instead of reacting back to that person and that's why we talk about this and that's why you have to be strict even if you don't want but always here take the middle way it depends also on the situation on the person and you can be strict for a while, even with the same situation, even with the same person in the same situation. And then you have to give up. You can also become milder if the person calms already. It depends. You have to see, let it flow. Not that I tell things here and you learn things here, but it's not that they all fitting for all situation. And you have to make experience. But that doesn't mean that you have to entangle too much now that you can make more experiences on the outside world. Then you will also forget your inner development when you are only going among people all the time. That will be also not good. You have even to retreat after meeting a very aggressive person so that you can reflect. Have you acted good or could you do something better? But don't over reflect also. This, this will end up in overthinking. So also, there are so many dangers, even when we are alone with our own mind. So there are even more dangers when we are in a situation with people. And that's why we talk about this in that videos. And the sixth point actually is a hint from a friend or results from a conversation with a friend. What to do with saying no? It's the same problem you have from the previous point that you are so sensitive. You don't want to be strict as well as you don't want to say no, because if you say no, it's rejection and you don't want to reject other people. There's also very high value behind it you developed in the last years. That's good, but sometimes you have to reject. It's just on the outside world. So that is okay, because otherwise people would do what they want with you and they would entangle even more in you in their world. And so there will be even more disadvantages. So you have to overcome yourself, even your good values, and you have to say no. This point also sounds like it's pretty easy, but you know from everyday life when you're so sensitive, it's so hard to say no. You don't want to reject someone, but the people don't feel so rejected. They are different. They are in their hard world. They entangle so much with other people and they hear the no so often each day because other people also say them and they have it easier to say. And so they will not feel sad or rejected when you say no. So you have to say no. It just appears hard for you, but for the other person, it's okay. You can say no when you want to say no. But in some cases, you have to consider you have to calm, you have to go inside of you. Sometimes you can even 
have an answer of avoiding yes or no. Because even with an answer which requires only yes or no, people can entangle you even more or can bring you in even more critical situation, especially in shopping or something. If you want to avoid yes or no, you can also say in many situations, let me check. This was my friend was saying. He's a hotel owner. And whenever people come, can you arrange this? Can you arrange that? He never says yes or no. Or we don't with no, he don't want to disappoint the people. And with yes, he don't want to make promises which he can't hold, maybe, and then he feels guilty or for nothing. So what does he then? He says always, let me check. And that's a good solution, I think. Now it comes to the sixth point, and this is already the solution, how to deal with the people, but more in your insight, you have to be thankful. You can't, you have to be sound so strict. Now you, we are not about dogmatic, religious, old rules. You have to be good to people. You have to be thankful or like a very strict educator on their students. You have to be kind. And so, no, we are automatically that. And being thankful, even there is so much research on that, that it is healthy. It causes healthy patterns. It is even biologically healthy. That means it can even support healing if someone has a disease when this person is more thankful in his life. So why not to be thankful? It's not only a religious thing. It's a very modern thing, which even the outside world sciences like biology say they now could see that even thankfulness makes healthy. So be thankful that you have an opportunity to practice, that you have an op opportunity to practice kindness when someone attacks you, even in that worst case, that you are still can be calm, that you are still can practice kindness, that you are still can practice compassion. So this person is a big opportunity for you that you practice this very good ethical behavior. And that's why you should be additionally thankful and of course, you can be thankful for the thankfulness because it makes you healthy. Isn't that cool? It's a win-win situation. It's a win-win-win situation. That means even one win for the other person and two wins for you even. But only when you are in this inner development, then you see even more wins for you in every situation. And the seventh point, as you could guess, forgiveness. I have already named it earlier. You have to forgive. Why? Even in the worst case, the person is shouting on you. It's a very bad person, maybe. Why you have to forgive? Not you want to, you don't want to impress God or you don't want to impress someone. That would be wrong reasons. This is what they teach children when they teach them ethical stuff. And, they, and then the children want to impress their educators. And that's the wrong thing, actually. So they just behave good to impress someone. You do it for your inner development. Maybe there is also research on forgiveness because also kind of a thankful thing. I don't know. But here the forgiveness is a very important thing because the unconscious people don't know what they are doing. Even Jesus said, Lord, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. And in which situation he said it, he said it on the cross when they want to kill him, when they are then when they were already in the situation killing him, and he was already in a dying situation on that cross. And then he said, Lord, forgive them, because they are not knowing what they are doing. They are ignorant. They are not knowing, as Buddha said, and that not an ignorance in the sense of not knowledge. So they are just acting out their emotions because they don't know a higher knowledge that we have to overcome the emotions and which strategies we have. They don't know about how to make the meditation and to, to resolve or to transcend the emotions. So they are not even interested in that and they don't want to develop. But you do and that's why you forgive because you have a deeper understanding of everything and you also have a deeper understanding of the unconscious people. And also for me, forgiveness is very hard every time, again and again, because 
why should we forgive or understand these negative people? Because it is very hard to forgive them when they are even not willed to forgive. They are not willed to forgive others. They are even not willed to, to develop. So why should we forgive them when they are not willed to forgive us? That is also a very big question. Everyone on his path maybe is confronted with sometimes that the thought appears I don't want to forgive him because he also didn't forgive me. But then again, we are falling in self pityness So ego is involved, but we want to develop and to overcome it. And that's why we here see the self pityness and that the ego tries to bring us away from forgiving. And you always have to see the future as well. This person maybe will develop in future when you are a good role model in forgiveness. You don't even have to forgive extra with your hand or that, that you confront this person and say, hey, I forgive you. You can do it. It depends. But the bigger thing is you just, you just do it with God or you just do it inside of you that you forgive this person. That is the better thing. Just on the surface also can stay on the surface. And then again, you will not have the compassion in your heart because you are do it only on the surface. You have to do both. Actually, the best is both. But if the situation is not good to do it on the outside, then it is better even to do only on the inside. But only on the outside is too much on the surface. So better is the inside always. And you have to focus the whole thing, the whole world, the whole existence. For example, this dimension has space and time, a timeline. And this person now is here and he will develop, not now, not next year, maybe not in five years, but maybe in 10 years, he got a disease or something happened, life crisis or something like this. And then suddenly this person calms because the disease forces him to calm. And then he comes to other ideas and other interests, like reading some religious or some philosophies. And suddenly the person changes. So you have to see the future as well. Because we are living in time, is a timeline. We see the person now as he is. And we don't understand and we don't consider the person maybe will change maybe even you contribute as role model as i said you contribute maybe with good behavior that this person will change in future so we should not expect this of course uh, there is no guarantee for that but we should give a chance to that person and so it's always good to behave good and to be in the forgiveness because you never know if they change there is just a time between them the time is just belonging to this world when there would be no time and the person would not have this life story of becoming better later then you can also see at the end everyone goes back to god or to that union to everything one day maybe not in this life maybe next life whatever but we have to consider the best thing is, as all people would be already there, and that would be the best case. And for us, a good opportunity for forgiveness. If there are some special questions left, please let me know down below in the comments. Have a nice day. See you soon. Bye.